So we, so we know that the mechanical circulating support device has become a cornerstone of uh, treating the patient with uh, cardiogenic shock post STEMI, as well that we know that uh, the new devices even involved in the field is faster than their evidence. Uh, what we still need to know and learn more about who's the right patient and uh, which is the right device and uh, when it will be the right time to insert the mechanical circulating device you already saturated by the data. I will just present a few cases. Uh, this is cases from real part. Uh, this is the 38-year-old. Uh, he presented to our hospital by referral team as a late presentation of anterior STEMI. And uh, he has uh, chest pain, uh, moderate volume overload. He is on inotropic, moved to our center. You see his angiogram shows that total occlusion of postural AD and uh, severe stenosis in Ramos intermediate. RCA was fine. After discussion with the team, we decided to insert an intraortic balloon bump and do the PCI. We did just left main PCI provisional stenting and uh, kissing pot, and this is the final result. Final result was fine. Patient tolerated the procedure well, and we moved him to the uh, ICU. Uh, but this is his ECG post the PCI. Ejection fraction baseline was 20%. Lactate was initial lactate was 5.6. Unfortunately, we didn't use the swan guns. Uh, Ten hours later, the patient, uh, we get, I, I get a call from the ICU that the patient has developed hypotension with chest pain, and uh, his ECG shows three elevation on the anterior leads with complete heart block. We activate our team and we move the patient back to the ICU, and we find that we insert the pacemaker, and uh, we find the stent is well patent. We expect the stent that thrombosis, but is well patent. No new lesion, so insert the pacemaker, blood pressure improved well, and we are happy, we move the patient back to the ICU. Unfortunately, the patient after two hours, he developed more hypotension and then he arrested by VF arrest. Uh, ECMO team was activated and we inserted the ECMO bedside, uh, but unfortunately we lost this patient 72 hours later. Uh, this is a case from Real Pract. Uh, we have a lot of discussion about it. The second case is, is 48 year old male. He presented to our hospital also from the referral team with an inferior STEMI. Um, his ECG shows an ST elevation in the inferior, and we did RCA, so was total occlusion. Uh, we did simple PCI to the RCA. LAD has tight stenosis with circumflex. We did second stage PCI with successful result. Patient discharged from our hospital five days later with ejection fraction 55. 19 months later, the same patient present to our hospital, this time by national ambulance. Uh, he has a chest pain. Uh, ECG by national ambulance shows ST elevation in the inferior, and the patient he arrested in, at the gate of the hospital. He arrested, get arrest, and we start CPR. After seven cycle of CPR, we couldn't achieve any ROSC. Uh, it was a daytime. We activated the ECMO team, and we insert ECMO bedside, uh, where uh, during the locus assist ongoing CPR. After the bomb of the ECMO started, the patient, uh, he achieved immediate ROSC. We move him to the cat lab again. We check the LED stent, circumflex stent, which was well patent, which were well patent. And the RC was totally occluded as very late stent thrombosis. We did PCI to the RCA and the ECMO. On day three, we removed the ECMO and then patient extubated in day 18, uh, nine, uh, eight, and uh, discharged on day 19 without any neurological complication. The, case, the third case is 57-year-old male, also presented to our hospital through the referral team. Uh, his ECG shows an ST elevation in the interior. The patient has severe chest pain, it was midnight, and 30 minutes, uh, just 30 minutes before arrived the referral hospital, but when he achieved the referral hospital, he has severe chest pain. He involved in flash pulmonary edema with severe hypertension. Anitropic high dose and started an elective intubation already done and sent to our hospital. We insert the swan guns and uh, we did the angiogram. We find uh, the left main is totally occluded. Uh, we did PCI to this left main by provisional stenting. Actually, we need two stent, one stent in the left main, one stent in the lady and the under umbrella device. And this is the final result. His CPO was, initial CPO was 0 0.57, PAPI was fine, 1.3, and lactate cerebralis was not very high, it's only four. One hour later, the CPO improved to 0 0.78, and the PAPI uh, still maintained well. Lactate improved, bedside echocardiography shows ejection fraction 28. This is his post-PCI -EC, post ECG, and uh, on day four, we removed the impella. Uh, on day eight, we transferred to the general ward and discharged this patient on day 13 with ejection fraction uh, 42 without any significant complication. And this is the last case. Uh, this is 41 year old male. He presented to our hospital also through the referral team. Uh, he's a young patient. 
he's only smoker. Uh, during transfer to the referral team, he arrested in the, in the, uh, in the ambulance and he get one DC shock. Uh, then when he achieved the referral hospital, he get an arrhythmia storm and the prolonged CBR about 40 minutes with 17 DC shock. Finally, they achieved the ROSC, intubate the patient, high dose anaerobic, and move to our center. Our plan in immediately to insert the impella for technical reasons, we just put the wire until the impella was ready. We find that the LED is simple LED, really. We did simple PCI, and then we insert, after the PCI, we did complete heart block. We insert pacemaker and put our swan guns, and uh, we insert the, the impella. This is his ECG post PCI. Uh, the CPO 1.4 and the mixed auto saturation was 75, which is fine. Papi in the borderline is 0.94. Chicksha fraction bedside is uh, 25. Lactate improved significantly from 12 to 5.4. But 12 hours later, we find that the patient he need more inotropic to maintain his blood pressure, and uh, Swanga shows that Papi is gradually decreasing from 0 0.95 to 0 0.56. So we decided to upgrade this patient to Ikpella. And we insert the ECMO and we remove the impella on the fourth day. And ECMO uh, stay for 18 days, finally it's removed. Ejection fraction improved, but unfortunately this patient has moderate neurological damage and, go, uh, and went for long-term rehabilitation therapy. What we can learn from all these cases from real practice, firstly, that uh, good revascularization for case number one is good, but cannot be enough. Even you get a good result when the cardiogenic shock, good revascularization is important, but really it cannot be enough. Uh, also, if you have a witness cardiac arrest post stemi and you couldn't achieve a ROC, uh, ROSC immediately, you have to consider to insert an ECMO and improve the survival. Early step up mechanical support is very important and critical for, uh, to save the patient. Uh, swan guns always and mandatory to uh, lead the treatment therapy during uh, the shock wave because patient he can develop from left, uh, left heart failure to right heart failure and mix it. And really the swan gas is mandatory. And, uh, finally, the teamwork and thank you very much.